hands together for Jesus in here. That one was for me. Now put them hands together for Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Because I realized something that when you give Jesus what he wants, the Father's excited, he's excited, the Holy Spirit is excited, and heaven rejoices. Amen? Wow, y'all going to loosen up? Uh, because I, I didn't come to, to try to get you into heaven. I just come to celebrate our friends here. Because I, I'm learning this now, apostle and pastor, in this walk, I heard somebody say the other night, it is a hard walk. Uh, I beg the difference, it's easy when God is the focus. When God is out front, it's easy. You can deal with every demon when God is out front. It's only hard when we try to do it in our strength. But when you do it in the strength of God, mm -hmm, when you get weak, that's when he's made strong. Amen, somebody. And we need to understand this God that we serve, he never gives out. I believe the psalmist said he never lost a battle, and he never will. Uh, Y'all ain't nobody got to go with me. I'm talking about the God that I serve now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm talking about El Roya. He sees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the God who can do exceeding and abundantly above all that I could ask or think according to the power that worketh in me. Not the dunamis, but the exousia. All I got to do is use the exousia and it'll work. Amen? So we're excited to be here on this afternoon because I believe that God is strategically up to something uh, in their lives. Uh, I don't know about anybody else, but when you come before your man and your woman of God, never come empty-handed. Come on, you, you, you can't go into Burger King empty-handed. So you, you, you can't come to the house of God to eat spiritual food. If they give of their spiritual things, I believe the apostle said, you give of your carnal things. Come on, it ain't about money, but it'll answer some things. Yeah, so, so there are places that they need to go. You, you, can't, you can't catch a plane and say, it's faith going to pay for it. Oh, Y'all ain't got to talk to me. We got the wrong concept of God. Amen. You got to have this for ministry. Somebody's always in need. Amen. So we're just excited about what God is doing. I'm going to pray, and we're going to get into the Word of God because I, I believe some of you are hungry. Amen. But I've learned that my spiritual need outweighs my physical need every time. Uh, my physical food only lasts for a moment but spiritually will help me face tomorrow if Jesus delay his coming. And, and I, need, I need the strength of God to go in the place that God has ordained because how many of you know being saved, something awaits you and it's not good always. The enemy don't like you. Can't stand you because you're saved. Amen. So we're going to move here. Uh, I'm going to read your scripture coming from 1 Corinthians, I believe, 27 apostles. Is that right? 1 Corinthians uh, 27 through 29. If you have your Bibles, you can go there with me. I'm going to read it, and we're going to pray, and then I'm going to get out of your 
way. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 says, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. 28 says, And the base things of the world and the things which are despised have God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we come in the precious name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have afforded us with. Now, Spirit of the living God, we invoke your presence in the sanctuary. For we know that you live and you dwell in us, but we invoke your presence in the sanctuary today. Set an atmosphere that is conducive that we may hear your word and receive the engrafted word with joy in our hearts. I pray, Holy Spirit, that we would not just hear, but we would become active doers of your word. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for blessing the shepherds, the under-shepherds of this house. We thank you for what you're about to do. Holy Spirit, walk up and down the aisles. You are our great teacher. Do what you do, and we'll yield and submit to you. We thank you and we praise you. It is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we do pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I looked at the theme, Apostle and I, we talk briefly about it. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. I, I believe I, I'll say that again. Apostle, I'm going to have to take my time with this one because this here, this is just one you can't just scramble through. God doesn't call the qualified. Mm-hmm. Uh, he call, he qualifies the call. You know how it is when you think you're the one that's supposed to be up here. You know how it is when you think you're the one that God is using because you are qualified, but you are worldly qualified. Uh, see, don't get it twisted. The world can teach you knowledge and you can be qualified for a secular position. But when you start talking about God, you step into a whole different arena. I believe if my mind serves me right, I believe it's Psalms 8 and 4. The psalmist asks the question, what is man? That thou art mindful of him and the son of man. That thou visitest him. Thou has made him a little lower. Than, well, how did the demon get over us? We have been made a little lower than the angels, which is his special messengers that he sends to bring things in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. But now he's living in us. And so Paul here is trying to get the church to understand that there are just some things that you just can't call yourself to when it comes to God. Uh, you can't just say, uh, I've been called to this without the hand of God being on you. And I, I like the way God does things. Isn't it amazing how God gets the most messed up people? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, brawlers and, and, and MMA fighters and all this. And he put them, he get them, and he, he, he draws them to him. Then he began to deal with them. Uh -huh, but then he, here, come, here come an intellectual person that says, who, you? God is not concerned about the person the way we're concerned. Uh, we want them to have a master and, and all of these degrees, but they have no record of communication with God. And so, so here Paul talks to the Corinthians. And Paul here is trying to get them to see something in his text. Uh, Paul surveys. Apostle, you and I can, can witness because I, I didn't, 
I didn't come squeaky clean to God. I came with some baggage. But I knew the baggage checker. And he could get out what needed to be gotten out so that I could become fit and meet for the master's use. Yeah. If my calling had have been dependent on man, I'd have still been uh, in Lodibar, the place of nothing. I, I would have still been trying to make it happen my own way. Uh, probably on Mars Hill somewhere. So Paul, I'm going to do a little bit here and then I'm out of the way. Paul, he, he surveys the convert at Corinth. And God pulled me out of uh, the place called S-T-R-E-E-T. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you, you, you you've, been, you, you've been in church ever since you was a lap baby. Still can't live right. Got the law but got no spirit. Mm -hmm. you, you've always been there, and, and, and people that have, have been brought up in the church, they always felt like they was privileged. They felt like that if God would call anybody, it should be them. Yeah, but they didn't realize God ways are not uh, their ways. Mm -hmm. God thoughts are not our thoughts. And what we think of one another, God has a whole different idea because I believe Jeremiah 29 and 11 this is what it says I know the plans amen somebody that I have for you in other words God had a plan when you was a sinner when you was yet an enemy to him he had a plan and, 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 and you were not an educated enemy you was an ignorant enemy to God, but yet God had, he had a plan. And just because you backslid didn't eradicate the plan. I need Holy Ghost help in here. Just because they hadn't got to where you thought they are, that didn't eradicate the plan. In other words, sometimes God lets you finish your course. And then he goes to work. Yeah, yeah. God knows how to bring you. Anybody in here other than me, you ever been at death's door? But you couldn't go down like that. Yeah, yeah. Even if you had her, all he had to do was say one word. So Paul surveyed these converts. And Paul had to prove to them uh, that there was a mutual rejection between human and divine wisdom. See, humanly, humanly, can I talk about you? Humanly, they didn't think Clifford deserved it. Oh, uh, yeah, I got to call him Clifford there, but I, I, I know he's a pastor. Don't y'all try to do what I do. They, they, didn't, they didn't think Clifford deserved it because they knew Clifford record. They knew what Clifford did, so therefore, how can God use somebody of such reputation? I got, I got good news. God got a, a record of using folk with reputation. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, when, when God started using people with reputation, he exchanged reputation with character and integrity and devotion. And so Paul here wanted to let them know that there was a difference between human and divine wisdom. A school teacher can't do this. Yeah, yeah, because their intellect will always get in the way of God. They want God to succumb to what they think. And they don't want to succumb to what God says. Amen, somebody. Y'all ain't got to push me today. I push my own self. And, and so what Paul says, I, I need them to understand who God calls, God does something for them. And I'm going to get there in just a minute. And so because I believe that if it was left up to the church, they wouldn't have Clifford. Oh, uh, he, don't, he don't fit the description of what we're looking for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe we need to get another search party because we, we got to find somebody that's got our best interest. I don't care who you find 
if they hadn't been called and sent by God, your interests don't exist. Yeah. So Paul, Paul is trying to let us know here, humanly we know what we want, but divinely we have no clue. And so, so Paul goes on with the Corinthians, and he tells them, he says, the heart of true wisdom is knowing the ways and the will of God. Now, 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 now I'm going to go to Apostle. Apostle and I have conversation, and he often shares his experience with God. The church hadn't had an experience with God. They're looking for Paul. God ain't knocking no more folks down on Damascus Road. You don't even know what Damascus is. So now he, he often tells me of his experience and the thing, how God dealt with him. That, that's not human wisdom. That's God's wisdom. Because God knew that at his baby stage of coming into salvation, he couldn't deal with him like he did with a veteran. He had to bring him to the place of assurance and knowing that God was God. Amen, somebody. And then he said that you got to live in harmony with the ultimate created reality of God. A lot of people talk about God, but they don't believe he lives. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They don't know anything about God. They know what somebody told them. You can't get nowhere with God on what somebody said. you got to know him for yourself. And so Paul here is trying to get the church at Corinth to understand God wants to be individually in your life. Uh-huh, yeah, and so he says, the human wisdom that Paul opposed. See, we got, we got to stop letting human wisdom try to run the church. You don't have a record with God. You can't run a house of God without a record with him. You got to know something about God. And so Paul here, he says, but what you're trying to do is not based on intellect. Come on, I know a lot of us in here are smart. We got degrees in school. That don't mean nothing to God. You got to have a degree in neology. You got to have a degree in studyology. You got to have a degree in wordology. Amen. Not science, arithmetic, algebra one and two. You can get that one what in Christianity. Yeah, yeah. The only numbers you're gonna be adding is membership to the kingdom of God. You ain't trying to build no checking account. So Paul here he said, this is not intellect or education, but he said what you got is a false. Dependence on God. See, you think you got it. And I come to tell you, you better know you got it. And see, I'm going to address everybody here because I need y'all to understand, God didn't give you a novice. Never will forget, I went to a church. They wanted me to preach. And I got there and I said, where's the pastor? They said, we don't have one. I said, what do you mean you don't have one? How did y'all get me? He said, he's dead. I said, really? So they brought me in. They had three chairs. The middle chair had a black drape open. I'm like, wait a minute. He dead and y'all still moaning over him? 30 days, it's over with. I said, so y'all have waited this long? I said, how much stuff is going on in here? You got the chair covered up, I might want to sit in the hot seat. But it's covered. Take the cover off. He's gone. I, I said, God told Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. But he said, Joshua, just as I was with Moses, so shall I, I be with you. So Paul here is trying to get us to understand you don't need a search committee. You need the Holy Ghost. And Paul said they had a false sense of dependence on God and a bent toward self-sufficiency. Okay. Everybody wants to run the church, but nobody knows the pain and the agony of being in leadership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, when you're in leadership, every casualty is accounted to you. Watch this. God rejects human wisdom because it is pride and self-glory. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's pride. Self-glory. In other words, you get the glory. If you, if, you, if, you, if you listen to Psalms that I read, he has made him a little lower than the angel and has crowned him with, come on, y'all. People tell me, uh, you can't have no glory. Well, the scripture wrong then. Psalm 8 says he crowned us. He crowned us. So now as I move on toward your theme, God doesn't call the qualified. Now, when, 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 when people feel that they have the qualifications to run a church, they start a church. I might need to say it again. See, because I'm tired of people trying to come to where God has placed them, but go get a novice advice, come home and try to challenge divine wisdom. And so, so what God does is God fix everything in order according to his will. Mm-hmm, yeah. I'm going to read the scripture. I believe I can play with this. Watch this. 26 says, For ye see your calling, brethren. Now, when you read that scripture, don't get it twisted now. You just got saved. You ain't called a pastor. Mm. Don't get it twisted now. You, you, can't, you can't leave free lunch. And get here. Right. Too many of that going on now. Yeah. See, when you leave Freelon and get here, you're going to have the membership that same way, yeah. with that same attitude. Right. Right. And so what God does is God works based on a person's heart. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Seeing your calling, brethren. And if your calling is so strong you can't obey nobody, that ain't God. I'll say it again. Right. See, I, I don't care where you are in life. Whoever you under, God hadn't elevated you above them. Right. I stand on that. Because yeah. if he had elevated you above them, you'd have been the leader. Yeah. And you got to learn how to let your education subject you yeah. to somebody. I know more than them. Well, you ain't doing nothing. You don't pray. You don't fast. You don't cast out demons. You sit in the corner and complain. Paul here is addressing everything. He says, how that not many wise men. Y'all Bible say that? Y'all got a Bible? So this word men here is not a gender word when it comes to God. Mm -hmm. See, we done, we, done, we, done, we done messed up the church because God is male. God ain't no male. God is spirit. And you can't put a spirit in a male-female category. And so you got to understand everything that's written, here was written for our learning justification. Well, okay, I, got, I believe I got somebody who want to challenge me. If, if it's written, find in your Bible just the Maccabee 1 and 2. You want to get deep, get that deep. Find it. It's not written. We only got 66 books, and they're not included. They were left out for a reason. So you got, you got people, well, I know Justice, and I know Maccabees. Well, you can't live Old and New Testament. But now you want to bring Maccabees in. One and two, and justice. Yes. Go pray about it. Then you got to go buy the three books. Because they ain't in here. I own them. I read them. 66 is enough for me. Amen. He said, not many men, wise men after the flesh. Now, that, 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 that should have startled us right there. God doesn't call us after the flesh. He has to do a work on us. He says, not many mighty. I don't care how strong you are. 
I don't care how big and bad you are. Even the worst pastor, God had to humble him. He had to bring him down because he, he needs us to understand he's in charge. Tired of all these boys thinking they run the church. The deacon board, the foot board, the mother board, the usher board. Every board want to run. But no board have a relationship with God. No board says, Apostle, can we go to the church and pray? Or pastor and apostle. They wait until they get there and then they show up. L-A-T-E. Watch this now. And not many noble uh, called. Y'all see that in your Bible? In other words, in other words, not many that came from a well-to-do family. I came from a messed-up family. I just didn't come up from a poor family like Harvest on that line. Didn't have much, but the Lord been good. If he been good, you got a lot. In other words, he, God says, I don't choose men that is of superior. I choose people that are rowdy, radical, this, that, and the other. Watch this now. He says, but God has chosen the, chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Now, can you see God here going and tugging at a man's heart that knows how to get his way through life in human wisdom? Wow. Why y'all make it tough? You see how God, see, don't tell me God is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent, and you don't believe he can go where you can't go. Don't tell me God is all this. Don't tell me God is all wise. He's all knowing. He's all seeing. And he's everywhere. And you don't think God can watch over a man in the crack house? Don't tell me who God is if you don't believe what he does. And so what God does is God seek it as such a one that he can put his hands on. Mm. Y'all ain't got to go with me today. That's why the church is in the shape it's in. It's got too many squeaky clean pastors. They got two lies, but you don't know nothing but about the one that's on Sunday morning. And all he wants is a C-H-E-C-K. Somebody that's trying to get you into the place that God has called you, you fight. You fight, you fight, you fight. But one that tells you God knows your heart, you love him. Man, I didn't come to play today. My friends, they're like me. We got to go in the trenches. We're fighting everything. And it's not outside that we're having to fight. It's inside. Amen, somebody. So you can't tell me God knows how to get around to people. Apostle, it, 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 it is amazing how that God allow us to run till we run out. And then he, he's like the, the, the father, the prodigal. You tell your parents, give me all I got. They ain't got nothing to give you. You run off anyway. You go find somebody you can hook up with and they got you right on the brink of death while they're sleeping, and you're doing all this stuff, but yet Jehovah watches over. Should have, could have been dead, but God was watching. The hand of God was over. God knows how to keep. And this is what I love about God. When God starts choosing men and women after his heart, he'll let you go to a palace and then to a pit. Everybody turn their back on you, but God says, I'm with you. 
Lo, I'm with you even to the end. Wherever you go, I'm with you. Yeah, you got these people, they're just coming out now starting churches. Uh, Coffee Table Baptist, Pillar Rest Baptist, and all kind of Baptists. And we just as Baptists crazy, we run into the Baptist. Don't give me a denomination. Give me Jesus. Give me a church that's preaching Christ. And I know, I know these two. Of preaching Christ. I said, I know, I know. I, 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 don't have to, I don't have to be there all the time. I know the fruit is on the tree. Yeah. This brother here loves God's people. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? He loves God's people. And the only reason that he can love God's people, he had a Jeremiah 3.15 experience. And I will give you pastors, a shepherd after mine heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. I won't give you a novice. I won't give you a wise man. I won't give you a mighty man. I'll give you a God man. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. He said, and I've chosen the foolish things of the world. I can't, I can't go into detail. That's the apostle story. But some of the stuff he told me that were foolish. I didn't say that to him. Uh, it was foolish. It was foolish. You, you know what you're going into, but you're still going. That's foolish. But isn't it like God to let you build your confidence in your way of doing only to make it dwindle so that he can build it back up, but this time in the new you. In the new you. See, one thing I love about God, God will let your way wear you out. Because once he gets you in his way, you won't desire to go back. What I love about God, he'll, he'll let you finish your course. You can have Francis and, and Jameen and, and Rodriguez and Rajesh. God will let them all walk out on you. They got your sofa, got everything you own. And God says, I've been waiting on you. I've been waiting on you. See, one thing I love about God, God don't force you to follow him. He lets you make your choice. Them old folks used to tell me, if you make your bed bumpy, you got to lay in it. Y'all young folks don't know nothing about that, but keep making them bumpy beds up. You're going to come out of there after a while. One thing I love about God, when God gets to working, see, that, that's, that's what I like about God. A wise man will try to help God out. A mighty man will try to help him out. A noble man will try to help him out. But a humble man will follow him. A humble man will follow God. Wherever he take him, he, he, he says, and and God has chosen the weak thing. Yeah. See, when you come out of the world and you come to God, you weak. Because, yeah. see, you've been stripped of your way. <laughs> you've been stripped. You, 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 you've been, you, see, when, when God stripped you, you don't lay down religion. <laughs> when, when God stripped you, you say, God, where can I go? Yeah. You'll be like, David, where can I go to flee from your presence? If I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I take wings and fly to the highest mountain, you're there. Where can I go to flee your presence? I love the way God does it. And the reason God says God has chosen the weak thing of the world to confound the wise. Y'all know anything about that? He said, I, I take the weak things. I take the things that you think is not sufficient and I put to shame everything you think is mighty. That's right. right. Y'all ain't, ain't got to go with me. You know why all these churches were closed? They were weak. Y'all can go tell them Bishop said it. I ain't scared. Y'all want my phone number? Because 
How can you walk with God and something shows up at your door and then God don't exist no more? Huh? Never walked in agreement. If they all walk off, God said, if you stand, I'll stand. One thing I know about God, God will raise up a nation. God will take a bunch of crackheads, pull them out the crack house, send them to somebody that won't judge them for crack, cast out the crack demon, teach them what God says, and they arose. The church is afraid of those type people because one thing I know about a crack addict, a pimp and a prostitute. Yep. If God ever give them one touch, yep. you ain't got to beg them. Nope. They know how to be they, you know why they know how to be committed to possible? A lot of these preachers scared to say it. They was committed to their addiction yeah. Yeah. with no hope. When God shows up, yeah. he cleans them up. Now they have hope. Church scared of that. Most people in the church now scared of God because they know if they let him in, they can't do the same stuff. That's right. That's right. You don't need to spray yourself with microband. Let God in. You don't need to use nothing to clean you up. Let God in. Put the word in you. The word of God is a washer. I pray, I pray diligent for them. You can't operate in this type of anointing and not come under attack. Y'all ain't got to talk to me. You need to set an atmosphere. Let me get down through. I got to get out of here. He says, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised. You ever been despised, apostle? Jesus was despised and rejected. <laughs> so in other words, God said, I'll take that which has been despised. It says, had God chosen. Now, look, look at God. You ain't qualified, but you're chosen. Oh, come on. I said you ain't qualified. Ain't got good English? Can't, can't pronounce them words, them eyes, the Hittites, the Jebusites. The Canaanite, the parasite, the Kohathites, you can't do that. You just said them ites. God said, you ain't qualified. But wait till I get through. Just wait till I, I get through. When I get through, you'll be able to effectively do what I called you to do. He said, he said God has chosen, yea, and the things which are not. I know I wasn't no preacher. Hallelujah. I had too much world in me. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't got to talk to me. <laughs> Bishop said he wasn't a priest. You wasn't a saint. Come into church. Got the law. Couldn't keep it. But I ain't just like them. You just as worse as them. So God had to show up. He chose. Isn't it amazing how God chose that that's been rejected and despised? He don't just choose them just for somebody to say, not if it hadn't been for God. He give them a purpose. Come on, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get there, but y'all making me go now. Because, see, y'all thought he had to go to Jackson Reformed Theological Seminary. All they can do is teach you history. Then they really don't know history. That's his story. That's all they can do. You think they got to go down the new foundation down there in, in Terry. And I drove all the way to Lumberton to Rehoboth, Family Life Center. Then I went to Wayside. Then Jackson Reformed Theological Seminary gave me an open invitation. It says, anytime you want to come and we're going to teach you the Holy Spirit, I ain't been yet. Only teach me history. He said, which is the base thing? The base thing, lay me a foundation 
so that when I come to God, I got something to build on. Come on. Too many people in the church now tell me I'm saved because grandmama was saved. You don't get it like that. You got to have your own experience with God in reference to your salvation. And too many people in the church, we're trying to get saved people saved. All over again. Hallelujah. Never seen this. He says, which are despised has God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught, to nothing, the things that are. In other words, all you think you know, God says, I'll bring somebody out the street and prove you, you know nothing. Paul says, all that I know, I counted as dung. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> That's what Paul said. In other words, Paul was really trying to get us to, to see, I don't care how anointed you think you are, you never know him in his fullness. Amen. Never know him. You'll forever be learning God. You can never figure him out. Everybody think they got God figured out. I ain't figured him out yet. Every time I think I got him, he show up somewhere else. Amen, somebody. Apostle and pastor, y'all hold on. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. He said that no flesh, no you, no you. See, I'm, I'm tired of them, Brother Jeremy, singing this song, God, give me you. God said, give me you. This is an even trade here. I give you me, you give me you. Mm -hmm. You want all of me and my blessing. I want all of you and your blessing. And you ain't got nothing but the fruit of your lip, how good he is, how he's kept you, how he's protected you, how he's watching over you, how he's prospering you. Everything you own belongs to him. Amen. When, when God came, I got to get on down the road to Apostle. When God came, he brought all of him. Mm -hmm. Every bit of him. He put all of the sovereign God in a weak you and I. And he said, I ain't going to grow me until I grow you. You grow God, said, I'll show you more. In other words, isn't it amazing how big old God just stepped down in little old us? Reduced himself in size, not power, to fit us so that we could carry out his divine will. That's just like God. I don't know nobody can do that. <laughs> Y'all ain't got to talk to me. Hallelujah. And, and, then, and then now let me move on here. So I came here to say, God doesn't call the qualified. But knowing your apostle, God qualified him for the call. See, when you come out of the world, you ain't qualified for nothing but worldly stuff. That's all you know. I've been there. I've done that. I got a t-shirt. I, I wouldn't put apostle in the forefront of everybody. I, I'm right there with him. All I knew was what I knew how to I knew how to make things happen right. in my own strength. Right. Right. And so so what God is saying is that's got to be dealt with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. See the church apostle is in the shape it's in because they don't want God to deal with them. Right. They want God to deal with you for them, right. but God said, uh uh. They, they, they're trying to put you in Moses' place. God, if, if you don't do this for Israel, just block me out your book. God, oh, they're going to handle their own stuff. And so what God is, is doing now, he has qualified you. See, people tried to tell me all kinds of things about it. They didn't say a part. They said, man, do you know Cliff? I don't know Cliff. I know the new Clifford. The old one, I don't know him. He done told me enough about the old one. I'm scared of the old one. I don't want to see him. Y'all hear what I'm saying? See, they can't let him be the apostle 
because they're trying to make him clear. Every time they hear his name, I don't, I don't have no problem with him. You don't know him. <laughs> Who do I know then? He's not a copy. They're trying to hold him back so that they can get to some of you. But God qualifies the call. Y'all don't believe that. Who got that? Who got a Bible? Go to Romans for me. Go to 8. I'm thinking to get on down now, Apostle. I'm getting on down now. Go get out of here. See, when God gets through, Apostle, I can say this because when I was out there, I did everything that I was big and bad enough to do. I had a reputation that superseded my height. I had it, I had it. But I knew coming up that there was something I had to do and it involved God. I ain't want that. Because see, when you out there, you can do stuff and get away. But with God, you got to give an account. Come on, y'all. Y'all ain't got to, y'all, y'all ain't, y'all ain't got to agree. Cause half y'all don't know nothing about this here. You got to be careful how you play in darkness. It'll follow you to the light. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I, I did everything that I thought I wanted to do. And, and one day, a, a woman said to me, young man, you look like a preacher. I said, how do a preacher look? I'm a scoundrel. <laughs> Preaching ain't on my mind, woman. Preaching don't entail what I do. And she says, you just look like. I said, lady, I'm a scoundrel. But I knew that, that the hand of God was on because I had started having visions and dreams. And, and I, I saw myself dead. I'm like, oh, Lord. It scared me. So I said, I better go on and get everything done I want to do because sooner or later I got to go in. I got to go in. Sooner or later I got to go in. When I go in, I can't come back out the same way. I got to go in. So I might as well get everything done that I want to get done. They tell me, man, we going to church. I ain't going. I want to find things to do to keep from just getting even in the presence of God. Because, see, being in the presence of God, God will do stuff. I ain't hanging around no church. I'm just going to see what I can find. It was out there. I stayed in my lane. My lane was called the lane of darkness. Mm -hmm. And so I stayed there in that lane until one day I got caught. And when I got caught, this pastor said, young man, come to me. I'm like, don't, don't be talking this Jesus stuff because I didn't come for this. He said, you've been running from God for a long time. I'm like, who been talking? Somebody had to tell him because I, I don't remember seeing him in none of the places I hung out in. Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. And so I said, wait a minute. How do he know this? I don't even know you, brother. He said, you've been running a long time. And I'm like, I ain't through running yet. <laughs> Soon as I got out of there, I went back to my old ways. To my old ways. Because I wasn't finished. Amen. Uh-huh. You know how Paul says, I finished the course. I wasn't finished. I had some unfinished business. They don't want to submit. They ain't through. But let me tell you something. I believe I can say this. The years that Apostle and I had out there, you don't have them. They weren't doing all this stuff when we were. They were doing stuff, but now y'all bad. Now y'all, y'all bad. Y'all got me scared to come out certain times. Man, man, I don't know where y'all come from. But y'all slip up on a man. He don't know where you come from. Y'all got me scared to come out.
So what God is trying to get us to see is everything has an appointed time. And so I said, okay, God, if you are God, prove yourself to me. You can't make a covenant with God. If you make a covenant with God, he's going to answer. He, I said he's going to answer. He's going to show you him only to the point where you can understand. So Paul gave me a nugget in Romans 8 and 28. See, I don't care how far you go in the world, all things work together for good. Come on, come on, come on. I said all things, the good, the bad, the ugly, is work together for good. See, in order to be successful in God, God got to let you grow up in the world and the world got to disown you. Too many church folks in the church, the world still own them. The world hadn't disowned them yet, but when the world disowned you, you come in then. He said, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and who are the call according to his purpose. In other words, when God saved you, there is a step before you step into it. See, mo most, mo most, most people, the apostles, they think that when God saved them, he just catapults them into ministry all at once. You can't stand there because you don't have, number one, experience. Number two, you don't have a record with God. Number three, you don't have a relationship with God. Number four, you don't have contact with God. So in other words, you don't have a prayer life. You don't even know how to pray. I've seen too many come out of the street into the pulpit, and now they're back in the street. Huh? Call was out of sin. No, 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 no. See, this, my, my brother-in-law used to say, this is the most sacred place. I told him, man, this ain't the only place sacred. The bathroom sacred. Everything around God is sacred. This is not the most sacred place. I don't care where you go. Just the same way you got to live behind the podium, you got to live it on the pew. We know. All things work together for the good, for those who love the Lord and who are the call according to his purpose. What did he call you for? Mm, I believe I go on now and move. I believe I, I, I've known this man of God. When I first met him, I, we, 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 we talked and we left. I said, God, it's going to be tough because we too much alike. <laughs> God, I, I, I hadn't, I've been trying to find somebody that I could connect with for years. I just can't connect with everybody because my focus is God, yes. not where I came from. They, they, they wanted me to come back to the old stomper ground. I told them my shoes don't walk that way no more. Because, right. see, you, you can't. When, when God brings you out of into, you can't keep going back. Right. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. And so, Apostle, I, I've heard your testimony and your confession. And, and so I, I, I looked at your, your theme. You've been qualified for this position. There are many desires, reasons so many people don't like you, they desire to walk in your shoes. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, church. You don't know what it costs. Can, can, can you dodge a B-U-L-L-E-T? <laughs> Ain't nobody talking now. Can you do what it takes to fulfill his you? Do you have the qualifications to walk in his footstep? Ain't nobody talking now. I'm not going to leave you out, Pastor. I'm going to bring you on. Because, see, the church don't understand. You ain't got to go through all that. He went through for y'all. Yeah, yeah. Now, what God is doing, God has brought y'all a man from the wild side. I said a man from the wild side. 
See, every now and then we hook up with wild things. And two wild things going to bump head, they're going to fight. Somebody got to say, wait, I can't handle this. I got to be taught. And so what God did, and th this is my friend, this ain't nothing negative against him. God brought him in from the wild side and he dealt with him for years. While Pastor Michelle was coming down the road of success. Then finally they got together, they met, and the saints was angry. You don't deserve her. You deserve somebody like me, crazy. <laughs> I'm a wrong. <laughs> let, let, let me tell you, he, God had to bring, let him go through to get to so that he could show somebody else there's a way in God that nobody understands. You ain't wild no more. You are under my jurisdiction and my authority. So what God done, he brought him in and he had to work on him. You know, you know when you got an antique car, when you let it set up a long time, you can't just jump in and drive it. it it's got to be restored. So God had to restore him back to the original. Ain't nobody talking to me. I'm, I'm trying to hurry up and get out of here. In other words, what God said, I got to get out of you what you brought in you because that was never my plan. Are y'all hearing me? God said, that was never my plan. I had to allow your choice to take you to some places, but I had to protect you because I had purpose on your life. He reserved. He reserved your apostle for a time such as this. In other words, now, Pastor, here you are. Now you're in here because I know sometimes you don't understand. But it's for your good. See, you can't... I'm, I'm coming down here where you is. And see, it's two men up. That girl, they're crazy. She got my blood. You're going to be just like this after a while. I know you... Can I say this? You're pretty. You're passive. They think they can walk you over. But God got you in the right place. If God did it, you're going to have to do it overnight. But God hooked you up with somebody that will take time and show you. And when things get tough, that can be there to handle and comfort you. God is spirit. So God says, I got to put my spirit in a man and bring you and the man together. And the man is going to train you, Eve, not to deceive him nor yourself, but to be a help meet, not a mate, a help meet. In other words, every qualification he got is being developed in you. So we don't want that kind of stuff in the church. Over there with that hat on, covering your eyes, telling me I'm first lady. I ain't, hey, God ain't got no first ladies. He ain't got no first ladies. He got sons and daughters. So God is using him in this season. This is what we need in the body of Christ. Men and women working together with one common goal. So what God did is he, he brought him in. And see, I, 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 I love this brother. I defend him. People go to talking. I'm little, but I can be rowdy. Yeah. Lily know me from Utica. I shut the school down one time. I was rough. I'm telling to y'all. Now I went home and come back with three rifles in the truck of a car. The security guard ran, told me, don't you come back down here with that no more. Man, you security. I ain't have a one bullet. I knew LJ didn't have a one bullet in a gun that held six. One bullet. I gotta understand. I value, I value what God has invested in these two. I value it. And I am going to protect it to the best of my God given ability. I've got somebody praying for us, and we're praying for them, you all as well. But i got to keep the leaders lifted up. I'm his 
Aaron, he got to have a her. I know his brother's here that's holding him up, but we need somebody walking in the same position. Possum went on to be with the Lord. That was the Aaron and her. We were there. We was always there for him. He's always been there for us. He's always been there for me. I never have to call him. He always tell me, I've been praying for you. I tell him, I've been praying for you all. I've always done that. This is what God is saying to us. He has been qualified for his position. And the enemy would love would love to create a situation where he'd move. But I know that ain't in him because he, he did too much out there. He, he's not afraid. But God had to humble him down. See, apostle out there, we had to protect us. We got to protect him now. We got a buckler and a shield now. We got a strong tower. We got everything that we need. Now what we've got to get the church to understand, you don't let the enemy get you to attack your man or your woman of God. So he, he's called. Now I like this. In other words, you got the legal right to do what you do. Well, y'all let y'all know about that. When you're legal, can't nobody vote you out. When you're legal, show me in the 66th book of the Bible they voted. I'm scared to say that because they, they like, yeah, they do vote, but it's not biblical. I told, told a brother at the church, I said, brother, I said, now, I know where you came from. I said, they had to vote you in. I said, but over here, I watch you for a year. Amen. You prove yourself, you go in. If you don't, you stay out. Ain't no voting here. You got every right as everybody else. Because I, we got to have somebody that we have watched. Right. We have groomed. One deacon told me, you don't have to prove yourself to God. And I said, well, you out. <laughs> what did I do wrong? You don't want to prove yourself to God. You out. You disqualify. You don't qualify for this right here. Show yourself. Second Timothy 2.15, tell them to study. To show thyself approved unto God. A workman. Wait a minute. A workman is somebody that works. Where are you working? I'm working in the body of Christ. I'm in the church working. Okay, well, what do I do? What the Word says. The Word tells us to keep leaders lifted. We don't do that. But we want them always lifting us. Oh, let me, let me, let me, let me, get, let me, let me get out of here. Let me get out of there. You've been qualified to fit this position. Sister, You've been, I got the word. You were pre-qualified at first, now you're qualified. You know, pre, they don't watch you. They don't saw your growth, now you're qualified. Because yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. see, they, they thought you were going to stay pre-qualified for a bunch of years. Right. Because, mm -mm, no, 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 I got you in a position to be qualified. Pre means you've been selected. You got to meet the criteria. You met it. I, I said you you've met it. And so now now what God is doing, God is gonna raise you up. Now, let me let me just tell you something. You're gonna have to crush some toes. Cause you know the queen there, they say everything to her. They wouldn't say nothing to me. They used to go behind my back and try to get her to agree. She said, you got to go ask him. When she said, you got to go ask him, they go the other way. See, some things I don't agree with. Now, she come home and tell me, I ain't putting up with that. Look, like, look at God. <laughs> I just get out the way. See, you got to understand, you got to take a stand. Your job is just as tough 
is the apostle. And God has, God is prone to you. When I first met you, I was like, mm, work, work. It wasn't a lot. It was just you had to submit to what he was doing. Because I, I used to, my tone of voice would shut my wife down. And I had to say, God, you've got to teach me how to respond. Now, she get a little tough with me. <laughs> Let me get on out of here. So, in, 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 in closing, this brother here has never, one time in all of the years that we have met and we conversed and we conversated, he has never said anything to make me doubt him in his calling. Are oh, y'all hearing me? He has never. This, this brother is always. We pull from each other. He pulled from me. I pull from him. And, and this brother here is a brother that every pastor needs in his circle. Are oh, y'all hearing me? Your leader, I can stand here and say, this is a truth. Man of God. I said I can say that. I'm not saying it because I'm here. I say it everywhere I go. People ask me, how do you deal with him? I deal with the God in him. Because the God in him ain't going to talk crazy. Well, we couldn't deal with him. You ain't me. You can't deal with a godly man when you got an ungodly spirit. See, we, 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 we want a lot of things thrown out, but we have to tell the truth. This brother here holds me accountable. I said he holds me accountable. If he says something that is right, I have no argument. I work on it. He get advice from me. Same thing. Whether I agree or not, because he who's in me will let me know he's right. You're wrong. Are y'all hearing me? This brother here has been there. See, when you find people that has the Spirit of God, you can lean on them as a rock. Don't try to take advantage. Don't call them for every little thing. Call them for the things that you can't handle. Since we, we don't meet up at Piccadilly, I'm about to call them and say, it's time to meet. Yeah, Are y'all hearing me? It's time to meet. Yeah. It's time to meet. Because I miss the fellowship. I miss it. Because we draw strength from each other. You want to know how we can keep going? We're drawing the strength of God from each other. We're not drawing our strength. We're drawing the strength of God. So let me tell y'all something, Kingdom Faith. He has been called and qualified for the call. Now, when, when God qualifies him, you can't disqualify him. The only somebody that can disqualify him is him. Are y'all hearing me? And the only way that he can be disqualified, he started doing something contrary to what God said. So Paul here used the Corinthian church to show us we got to esteem this union here. We got, we got to lift them up. We, we got to lift them up. I consider myself as one of his arm holders. We need another arm. Because it's going to look strange. He's just like this all the time. he got to have both arms up. Because being a pastor, it gets hard. Especially when nobody is pouring back into you. Honey, get this. When nobody is pouring back into you. And one thing, Apostle, I want to say to you, and I know you'll never do it. Don't give up. 
Don't quit. God is not through with you yet. God is about to do something. Let me get this other scripture because I didn't read it. My God, my God. Watch this. Whom, for whom God did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Now, I looked at that and I had to go back and pull that in just then because everybody saw him as an enemy man. Even in being in the world, God conformed us to an image that looks just like him. Y'all don't know nothing about that. See, you thought you, got, you thought you got changed when you came to church. God, God created us to look just like him according to Genesis 1.26. What God did, God ain't got these many faces. He created us to be, he created us to be holy. He cre created us to be righteous. He created us with godly character. He created us with godly integrity. He created us with godly devotion. He created us with the mind of him. He created us with all the He created us and gave us everything. While we were yet sinners, he gave us everything pertaining to life and godliness in him. In other words, while we were yet a sinner, God had already created us in righteousness. We don't know nothing about that. And so what God said is, he said, you got to look just like me. When, when I bring you from darkness to light, you can't walk like the world. You got to walk just like me. Everything that you learn in the world, you got to use it as a stepping stone to stay in righteousness. You see how high this platform is from the floor? God said, when you start walking in righteousness, you don't walk above people, you walk above your sin. In other words, what you came out of, you can look down at it. You, I don't need you walking in it. Are y'all hearing me? And so the thing that God has delivered us from, that's the platform where you can walk across and hold it because it's under you. No, nobody nobody want to teach us that. They want to teach us you just got to get along. Go along to get along. In other words, God says when you walk, you can look down at where I brought you from. You're up now. You're not down. Sin is dead. Life is up. You're up now. You're walking upright. Walk over it. Nobody wants to teach us that now. They want to teach us to become dependent on them. But I believe this brother wants to teach everybody he come in contact with how to trust God. Nobody, nobody, no, nobody wants to tell us that. They got us in bondage. We are churchy in bondage. I'm free. I'm free. Them people over in Burgess, they don't never want to see me no more. They don't never want to see me. Never, never, I was a scoundrel when I was in the world. Hadn't been saved all my life, but now that I'm saved, I'm going to stay saved. Hallelujah. Are y'all hearing me? I said, I am going to stay. I'm going to stay under the blood. They don't want to see me. I don't even have a conversation to tell them other than Jesus wants to save you. Amen. So here's your leader here. God has humbled him and exalted him. We don't like to say that because people tell us sometimes, uh, you can't say that about, I can say that. I know him. I don't just know about him. Did y'all hear what he said? He tell me that. I don't just know about him. I know him. I know him. They told me, man, Cliff Rout. I said, I ain't seen him. I'm sorry. If he is, he, 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 he's good. Because I hadn't seen that. I said, you, 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 you can't be a brawler talking about Jesus. Because Jesus ain't going to let you get out of hand. He, he's not going to let you. Man, do you know what would happen if he went crazy in here? I'm gone. 
I'm God. Y'all can just stay here and, and look if you want to. I am G-O-N-E. It, it got to take God. Look at the price. That's nobody but God. Because I, I got friends that are bigger than apostles. And they tell me when we out all the time, man, if anybody says anything, just let me know. Man, I'm not going to send you to prison. I mean, these guys here, apostle is little compared to one of my friends. I mean, he walks out like this. His wife the same way. I'm like, man, I, what y'all got going on? I mean, hey, what? He said, that, that's a, she's a professional bodybuilder. I mean, when... This girl here, she be just like this. When she come out with that little thing on working out, I be like, Lord, cover up. <laughs> she just like this. I mean, her, her thighs, when she put on those short pants, they roll up here. I mean, this girl is huge. Huge. I'm like, Jesus, what do you, can you imagine the strength of these people? But here's this man here. He's humble. Now, they think he'd be fussing because he get excited. When he get excited, I'd be like, Lord, get him, get him, Lord. Hold him right there. But, but that's it. God had to calm me down. Pat, my wife will tell you, they thought I was mad. I, I preach, I, my hands be going and this, that, and other because I'm excited. I knew that if God hadn't rescued me, I would have been D-E-A-D. Are y'all here? Is some of y'all saying, as little as he is, it ain't the size of the man, it's the size of the fight in the man. I'm telling y'all, God had to humble me all the way down. And Mother Abram, I'm thankful. A lot of people now, even in ministry, they are trying to walk away. One day I said, God, why do I have to walk away? He said, a wise man walks away. A foolish man will fight. I don't have to fight now. God fights my battle. He fights your battle. Pastor, he fights your battle. You don't have to fight. I tell everybody, whatever somebody do to you, God. You don't have to. You don't have to get out of character. You don't have to scream. You you don't have to want to get on toe. God fight your battle. I don't care how long things come against you all. There's a day of reckoning. God's gonna wipe the slate clean. I tell people that like, you better be careful how you put your mouth on people that you don't understand what God is doing. When God shows up, it ain't no such thing as I'm sorry. Y'all be encouraged. Y'all stay faithful. I started to tune up. I said, no, I better not do that tonight because I, I need y'all to understand we have sitting right here a jewel. We have a jewel. We have the heart of God. We have the mind of God. Everybody don't have the mind of God. I listen to Apostle Daniel intently. I hear what he said. This brother talks. He talks with the concern of everybody that's around him. That's why he's misunderstood. Because nobody thinks there is a pastor that care that much. They don't think that. They think everybody has that nonchalant attitude. Want a check. Want money. Baby, I know Apostle said, everything you see us with, God bless us to get it. 
we don't rob Peter to pay Paul. And I don't, I don't mean it to be braggadocious or anything. We give back to God, Amen. and God blesses us. Amen. And there ain't nothing that I got that would, if God said give it away, that I won't give it away. But I know one thing, he ain't going to tell me to give away and, and she in that red dress right there. So he'll tell me car and everything else. But right there, he won't because that's his heart. So y'all stand to your feet as we bring on.